8.3. Fossils, fossils, fossils. We're going to be looking at how fossils can form and the different types of fossils. So before we start looking at the new information, I wanted to kind of review really quickly and go over a couple of terms. So extinct is a word that you have probably heard before. So that is when organisms no longer exist, a specific species of organisms. And we're going to be talking about that throughout the duration of the chapter. And then this word evolution. So evolution literally means three words, change over time. And a lot of people get the word evolution confused. It kind of gets a bad rap from people who don't really understand what it is. So we're going to be continuing to talk about that basically through the remainder of the years we're talking about new information and I want to show you this picture to the right this is one thing we're going to talk about with preserved remains and this is from the La Brea tar pits so if you've ever heard of La Brea tar pits in California this is an example and you can see bones sticking out of the tar here and tar is something that can be found naturally but also it's the stuff that holds shingles to your roof so what are fossils fossils are the preserved remains or traces of once living things, so things that used to be alive. And it's important to remember that not everything can get fossilized. Things that are living organisms that get fossilized have died and um, been preserved or have had sediment covered over them in specific conditions. So not everything's going to fossilize. And fossils are going to give us clues to what Earth was like, so to different habitats that may have existed or what things may have evolved from. For example, you can see some different pictures here, and here's a trilobite, and here's a, a picture of a trilobite. And from this information, this trilobite fossil in a rock, you wouldn't know necessarily that they were able to move around, They're kind of like roly poly bugs that we have today. Those are descendants of trilobites, and they lived underwater in the Paleozoic era. So they lived around corals and sponges and things like that but you wouldn't know that information unless you had examined a fossil same thing with this right here big swirly shell thing looks kind of like a seashell it doesn't necessarily look like anything was alive however that is from an ammonite which is an ancestor of a squid which you can kind of see from the tentacles here that it's in the cephalopod family of squids and octopods so what are paleontologists? We know your stemology refers to study of. Paleo means ancient. So they study ancient things. Paleontologists are going to study fossils, basically. And a lot of people think that paleontologists just study dinosaurs, but that's not the case. You can be vertebrate paleontologists, invertebrate paleontologists. You can be paleontologists who studies previous atmospheres and paleobiology and all kinds of things. And these are some pictures from some of the different dinosaur digs that I've been on. Um, this is the first dinosaur dig that I went on in Lusk, Wyoming. That's kind of in the eastern part of Wyoming. And this is a bird fossil that I found in Kimmer, Wyoming, where I was excavating fish fossils. So it's really interesting that I found a bird fossil in an area where there had been water because it was a area with fish. So if you find fish fossils, you know it had to have one point been water. It had to be some kind of aquatic habitat. So it was interesting to find a bird there, and it was really rare. So the quarry kept the other half of that fossil because it was so rare, and they provide them for museums. So this beautiful picture shows us some stratigraphy. So fossils are usually found in sedimentary rock. Now, when you see all these beautiful layers like this, see teeny tiny little lighter colored red layers and almost pink layers and coral, so lots of different color layers, then that's going to indicate sedimentary rock because that means that you have sediments that have been deposited. So that's any kind of sediment, soil, rock, gravel, sand, silt, and those materials will all be compacted and preserved over time. And any organisms that lived in them will be preserved. So those organisms that have died, that may have perhaps been living in an aquatic area or even walking on land when they die, if the certain conditions occur, then they can be preserved. And some examples of cemetery rock are going to be sandstone. Hey, the word sand in there for sediment. And limestone. Limestone is actually made of um, ancient organisms like coral and coal, which we know is a fossil fuel. It's burned for energy. So those are examples of sediments. 
So what types of things might you find in sedimentary rock? So we just talked about that. What kind of things can be preserved in sedimentary rock? Fossils. So these are some different examples of things you can find in there. Some little crinoids and sea stars. And so that has to indicate that it was what type of environment. If you're finding sea stars and crinoids and things you might find in water. So what type of environment might that have been? Had to have been water, right? either ocean if it was saltwater organisms or could have been freshwater. So how do fossils form? Most fossils are going to form when something dies of course. So in this picture you see fish has died so eventually it sinks down to the bottom. So then it gets buried by sediment and this process has to happen quickly or it's not going to get preserved. So it gets covered over by sediment in this next um, step and that will preserve the shape and structure of the organism. Now if it is soft tissue or if it is muscle tissue or anything like that, then that is going to decay. So the stuff that becomes fossil is going to be the hard parts like bone. And then eventually weathering and erosion will expose a fossil at the surface so that people see it and know it's there. Otherwise, you wouldn't know it's there unless you are digging down into the ground or a lot of construction sometimes will unearth different types of fossils or preserved remains and that brings the construction to a halt because legally they have to notify um, state or federal agencies. So the organism dies, covered over by dirt, and eventually lots of dirt piles up on top of it. All that compresses and over time weathering will expose that up at the surface. So what types of fossils can be found in rocks? So the first one is molds, and you may have made one of these molds before. So if you've ever gotten plaster and, or Play-Doh and made a handprint, that's basically what happened here. So if you put your hand in the Play-Doh and then pull your hand out, you have a mold of your hand. You have a hollow area, an impression in the Play-Doh that is a mold and that's basically what's happened here. So in this example a theropod, a dinosaur, has stepped into mud and then continued walking and so it left a footprint. And a cast is a second thing. A cast is going to be a solid copy. So for example taking this mold right here and it getting filled in with other sediment will produce a uh, negative and positive. So you have one side and then the filled in side that is a cast of it. That's the copy of it. Same thing with this trial bike fossil here. You have a mold and then it got filled in with some dirt and then eventually that can either get broken apart or sometimes you can split these nodules apart and um, reveal the trilobite cast and mold that is within it. Next example is petrification. So petrification is sometimes referred to as permineralization, but you're most likely to see that on your EOG is petrified. So your stem petra, P-E-T-R, refers to stone. So minerals replace all parts of the organism. Petrification is really interesting because depending on the type of mineral that's been absorbed into the cells of that previous structure, it could be different colors. I've seen some things that are petrified that were um, ammonites or even dinosaur bones that have um, crystals in them, calcite crystals. I saw a dinosaur bone one time that had barite crystals in it. I have an ammonite fossil that is gold because it has pyrite crystals in it. So it just depends on the type of material. But a lot of times it's going to be some kind of silica based material that's kind of has a little bit of shiny look to it like this petrified wood here. Here's a huge example of petrified wood from Arizona, an echinoid. This is um, woolly mammoth teeth that I have and some coprolite. Number four, carbon film. So carbon film is going to be a thin layer of carbon that's left on rock. And we know that carbon is an element on the periodic table. And all living organisms are going to be carbon-based organisms. So we have lots of carbon in our bodies. And when the organism dies, in this case, and is covered over by sediment, the carbon kind of gets smushed into the rock. So they're really fragile, really thin films on rock. In fact, if you take your fingernail and you scratch across it, then it's going to be like 35 million year old information that disappears because literally it will scratch right up. And I've got some little 
tiny um, clam shrimp fossils from in the Piedmont, like the Eastern Piedmont in North Carolina. And they're super teeny tiny, but they're little films that have been impressed kind of like this fern here into black shale. And number five, trace fossils. So trace fossils are evidence of an organism's activities. So this is one similar to a fossil that I found in Wyoming where an organism, maybe a snail or something, has basically crawled across the ground, crawled across some mud, and it left an impression. If you've ever gone to the beach or even a beach area at a lake, you may have seen some of these things where something has walked across the ground um, or kind of skittered across the ground. Here's another trackway that is Dinosaur Ridge in Colorado. And you can see literally the dinosaur footprints. Wonder what this is. Take a look at those. Those are coprolites. That is poop. That is fossilized poop. That is poop that is so old that it has turned into a rock. And no, it does not smell anymore. And this one is a demonelix. This is another example of a burrow. And they have a lot of these in Nebraska. And when scientists first uncovered them, they thought that those were actually organisms. But it wasn't until later studies that they did on, they realized it was a burrow where an organism, kind of like a rodent, had burrowed into the ground. And it just created this really interesting spiral pattern. So it's called a, a demon helix. And number six, preserved remains. So organisms can be preserved in amber tar ice. And if you have ever seen the Jurassic Park series, that's the whole premise for the series is the mosquito that was trapped in amber. Amber is basically tree resin. It's tree sap. So if you've ever seen a tree that has sticky yellowy stuff on it, when that hardens over time, then over millions of years, then that will become amber. And amber is used in jewelry. Resin, tree resin, is used um, for the rosin that you might use in a bow if you play in an orchestra. And then tar, we were talking about earlier from the Little Brea tar pit. So you can see excavation taking place here. And they have actually uncovered a lot of Cenozoic megafauna like um, lions, American lions, woolly mammoths, giant sloths. Some of the things that you might see on the Ice Age movies in the Little Brea tar pits that these are two pictures of. And then a lot of areas where you have ice like in Siberia and Russia are going to have really well preserved organisms like this is not a elephant this is a woolly mammoth it's a baby mammoth that actually has the skin intact which is super rare and is only going to happen in cases where you have this type of preservation so the fossil record is going to show us a lot of different information it provides us information about the history of organisms that have lived on the earth and the environments in which they live so the fish fossils that we were talking about earlier, if you find a fish fossil, then that's going to indicate that the environment that was around that organism when it was alive had to have been aquatic because we know the fish live in water. And also the fossil record will show us how organisms have changed over time, how things have evolved and um, become more advanced in general over time. So older rocks are going to contain fossils of more simple organisms like bacteria. Younger rocks are going to have fossils of more complex organisms. So vertebrates, mammoths, things like that. Life on earth has changed or evolved over time. So that is one thing that's indicated from fossil evidence. If we didn't have fossils, those organisms that have been preserved, then we wouldn't have information about the past or those organisms that have lived in Earth's past. And evolution is going to tell us about how things have changed over time. So examining the fossil record shows us about the evolution of the Earth and biological evolution. So, for example, this is a person here for scale. So you can look at um, elephants that we know live today. And many of you may have seen an elephant at a zoo or on TV and things like that. So we have a mammoth here, woolly mammoth. We have paleomastodons, we have shovel tuskers, so we have a lot of different organisms that were in this family of proboscidea that are in the elephant family tree, basically. So we know how they are similar and we know how they are different by looking at their fossils and looking at this information that's been preserved. 
So now we're going to look at page 11 and using this picture and the information that's provided, answer these three questions based on your observations and making inferences about this information.